everyone, welcome back to the range. Got another body armor test today. This is from RMA Armament. This is their SRT plate, model 1003. This is labeled as a level 3A plus plate. It's all polyethylene, weighs about two pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces. This is a 10 by 12 plate. This plate is pretty much ready to stop all pistol threats plus some special rifle threats, particularly M193. So what we're gonna do today is test some of my specialty pistol ammunition against this plate and then depending on how it goes and how much space we have we'll step up to a couple of rifle threats just to see what's going to happen we may get penetrations we may not as always you know I like to go above and beyond what the plates rated for some of the tests will be at 10 feet our pro chrono power chrono as always it's about 80 degrees outside we use our 45 pound non-hardening clay briefcase as a backer so let's get into this since this is a pistol rated plate we'll start with some pistol threats we have some SS-190, some T6B, and some SB-193 subsonic in 5.7 by 28 millimeter. The SS-190 is a 31 grain aluminum core with steel tip armor piercing round. The T6B is from Elite Ammunition. This is a very really hard copper pre-fragmented projectile, 34 grains. And then the SB-193 is a subsonic 55 grain full metal jacket. But in the past, all three of these penetrated a HICOM Security Level 3A STP plate. So we'll see what's going to happen. We'll shoot in this order, SS-190, T6B, and then the SB-193. Then we'll go down and take a look at what we did. Try to get velocities off of these today. So the SS-190 first. Nineteen ten. Now the T6B. Twenty-one seventy-eight. Move the chronograph to the subsonic here. Nine sixty-six. That shot way low. Here is the SS-190, the T6B, and the SB-193. <laughs> Point of impact shift there. I was aiming way up here. Got to remember that with the subsonic. What do you guys think? There is no pass through. Peel some of this clay back here. You can see just a little bit of dimple there on those two rounds, but nothing. I may rethink some of these tests that we shoot against this today. Let's try the SS-190 and the T6B out of the PS-90 SBR. So we'll see if the increased velocity has any effect on penetrating this plate. Instead of SB-193, since it's subsonic, we'll substitute it with a Vanguard Outfitters Black Fang. Similar to the T6B, has a different design and is a much softer copper. We'll see what that's going to do. As I mentioned, SS-190 is first. Twenty-one fifty-four. Now the T-6B. Twenty-five, twenty-five. And now the black thing. Twenty-five thirty. Here was our SS one ninety. Our T six B was up here. We had a spot left. Then our black fang was right here. What do you guys think? Still no pass throughs. There's some dimpling going on there, but you see that little mark there? That's the SS one ninety. That's a hole. Peeled the clay away. That's a hole there. Give me a few minutes and I'll see if I can find what went through. I'm thinking maybe it's the steel core. So about an inch into the clay, I recovered the steel penetrating tip of SS-190. Cute little guy there. So needless to say, if we shot that through the PS-90, definitely would go through then might even get deeper penetration out of that. This is only about an inch in the clay. Lethal or not, hard to say. 
still it perforated the plate. Again, this ammunition is above and beyond the threat rating of level 3A. This is just, as always, a what if. Our next test subjects will step up to some 9mm special threats. This one right here is L7A1. This is a pretty hot 9mm load. This is a Czech steel core 9mm. And then this is the Swedish M39B. We've tested these in the past. They penetrated the high comm plate and quite a ways behind it. So we'll see what's going to happen to this thicker plate. Same material. We'll use the CZ Scorpion Evo today too. We'll test the L7A1 first. Thirteen ninety one. Now the check steel core. Fourteen twenty seven. And now the Swedish M thirty nine B. Thirteen seventy three. Here was the L seven A one. Here was the Czech steel core, and here was the M39B. There is no pass through. A little bit of dimples here. You can see barely any representation of back face there. With the poly plates, you know when you get back face because the whole plate is smooshed backwards. Now, I did feel a pretty hard bump on the Czech, so I cut this back cover off. And we'll definitely have to peel this out when we get home, but you'll see that part of that bullet did make it through. Didn't get into the clay, but it did penetrate. Surprisingly, that was easy to dig out. And it looks like a little rivet. There's the steel core. Mushroom the jacket out pretty good, which I do believe is a bimetal jacket as well. That's pretty neat. All right, time for some poison bullet. We got some 545 by 39 here. This little guy right here, some factory 60 grain Wolf mil spec. This is factory 539 7N6, and this is factory 10 7N6. Now the difference between the two 7N6s from what we've discovered so far is the factory 10 has a much harder steel core. It's closer to the 59 to 60 on the C scale, whereas this stuff was nowhere near as hard. So we'll see if that has an effect. The 60 grain will be first. Twenty-seven forty-nine. Now the seven and six five thirty-nine. Twenty-nine twenty-three. And now the circle 10. 29, 30, All right guys, infamous poison bullet. This was the factory 60 grain full metal jacket. This was the 539 factory 7N6. And this was the factory 10 7N6. What do you guys think? Ruh row raggy. Got some back face going on there with the first two shots. Not anything significant. Like I said, with the polyethylene plate, you know when you got back face because you get a huge bump sticking on the back here. And that 7N6 with that harder core, um, there's a hole there. A good size hole. It was smoking when I walked up to it. I'll see if I can find the core in there. But yeah, don't mess with that stuff. I dug around for a couple minutes, couldn't find the core. I did find some jacket fragments. I see that this part of the wood has been damaged. And if you look right there, you can see a hole there. So I'd have to say that core probably went through the wood too.
All right, our final test will be with the 556. We have some M193 by Independence. We have some of the Carl Gustav 62 grain lead free round. This actually has two part steel in it. There's a steel core and a steel penetrator. And we have Elite's T6223. This is a slightly heavier, I think 35 grain load of their solid copper prefragmented projectile. We'll take a shot out of these with the 16 inch barrel. Our previous testing today leads us to believe that anything with a hard steel in it will penetrate, so we'll see what happens. Our Independence M193 first. Thirty-one eighty-nine. 89. Now the Carl Gustav. 30 09. And now the Elite T6. 3152. Well, you can see from the clay in the background that something's gotten through. Here was the M193. We're a little close to the edge there. Here was the Carl Gustav. And here was the Elite Ammunition. T6. <laughs> That's the first one I've seen to really tear the front out of it. So what do you guys think? Oh, that Carl Gustav. Look at that. That hole in there. You can see part of the core right there, or maybe the tip. I think that's the core. The M193 was actually stopped. There's a good amount of back face there. I believe when they tested this in the NIJ lab, 2,900 feet per second was the upper limit for the M193 they tested, so that's amazing. That Carl Gustav, though, that's a nice clean hole there. And the T6B, or T6 from Elite, really didn't do a whole lot there. Well, it wasn't too hard. I think maybe these bounced off the back of my briefcase. It's only three inches deep and kind of created that giant wound cavity because the front of that's all smooshed up and there's the core so both of them made it through which again isn't surprising this is a level 3a plate rated for pistol threats and specific rifle threats we go above and beyond here on the channel just to see hey what's going to happen and we had a pass through I'm doing kind of a teardown on this plate on the fly here just to see where I can find stuff. This is the back half of the plate. You can see there was the 9mm that went through. There was the Carl Gustav 7N6 with the harder steel core. Here was the SS190 from the SBR. Now, I started to tear it apart to try to find the core from the SS190 from the pistol. And there it is. It actually almost made it through. I mean, it's just starting to poke through. So you know that extra velocity that we gained from the SBR helped it make it through. That's kind of interesting. Wow, a level 3A plus plate that's two and a half pounds that's able to stop M193 at over 3,100 feet per second. Amazing. Now, with polyethylene plates, the disadvantage to being able to stop most traditional rounds at a higher velocity is once you start mixing steel cores in there, then that's when these plates don't really shine, as we saw with the SS190 and the Carl Gustav and the harder core 7N6. But again, this is only rated to level 3A, and it stopped a lot of stuff that other 3A plates weren't able to stop, and it only weighed a pound and eight ounces more than some of the other prior vests that we've tested. I want to thank RMA Armament for providing us with armor to test. You all for watching. Now, a lot of times I post these on my Patreon account if I remember a few days in advance before I actually make them live on YouTube. So if you're not a supporter and you feel like throwing some coin that way to get a little early access to videos, then by all means, as always, catch you at the range.